In 2023, we did see some of the best WWE action figures that we have ever seen in our lifetime. It was a truly incredible year for Mattel and WWE action figures. But every single year, there's always a flip side to that. And today, man, we're going to dive into it. The worst WWE action figures of 2023. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Like the title says, we are diving into the worst WWE action figures of the year. Now, we're not going to be counting basics, or it would fill up the entire damn video. We can look forward to 2024, though, with basics, so that is definitely a blessing. And I think in 2024, we may even do a top 10 or top 5 countdown of the best basics of the year, depending on how the year goes. But today, like the title says, man, we're going to be diving into the worst WWE action figures, elites, and ultimates of the year. And I'm going to give you my reasoning behind everything, but let's shut the hell up and dive into it, man. Let me know what you disagree with and agree with down in the comment section below, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, man, so starting out first, we do have our first figure on the list. Now, it is not this beautiful looking Seth Rollins custom over here. It is the greatest hit Seth Rollins. Now, this is a figure we saw back at the WrestleMania Superstore out in LA, and I got to be real, man. When I saw this, I was heavily disappointed. Now, I know they said that it, it would be a whole new figure to update it with the formula, but it was just a disappointment. You know, we knew the leak. We knew that Seth Rollins was going to be a greatest hits figure, and then it was revealed that it was just going to be the same exact formula. No chest hair added. No belt added. It's going to be painted on. No change in knee pads. No change in glove mold, sculpt. You know, it's not going to have the updated Seth Rollins formula. It really disappointed me, and uh, th this figure is just, I, I just don't, li I don't like it, man. I just don't like it. Look how much better this looks. I haven't even got to showcase this. It's like the updated formula. The pants aren't completed just yet, but it is an updated version on the new Seth Rollins formula with a custom belt and everything. It's a beautiful looking figure, but yeah, greatest hit Seth Rollins is the first figure on the list, and this is not in any order. I'm just naming off the worst figures of the year in my personal opinion. Next up, we have a couple Ruthless Aggression Elites from the series. I think it was Series 4. We have Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Undertaker. Why is The Undertaker so damn tall? So these two figures right here, man, they're just so bare bones, and I know what they were going for. I know that they're relating it back to the Jax Ruthless Aggression figures and all those different things, but I just feel that these could have been so much better. They could have chosen different figures. I mean, you're looking at a standard elite of an Undertaker in blue jeans. No real cloth accessory goods, and I know, again, it ties back to the Jax figures, I know, but these were just so damn plain Jane, and like, I like the Austin figure. I like these figures, but they just were not up to par with the Eric Bischoff that was in the set, and I don't know. They, I just feel like they could have done so much more. These pants aren't even accurate to the, to the time. He didn't even wear this shirt. It's like some just different stuff. But again, they are paying homage to the Jax figures. I get that, all right? I got that. But yeah, I wanted to put those on the list. I mean, I guess you could say technically these are honorable mention. But, you know, I'm just, I'm giving you all the reasons why. Next up, we have a pair of Elite 100 figures. Elite 100 Cena and Elite 100 Rock. Let's start off with John Cena. Now, you guys know that I'm a connoisseur of John Cena football collectibles. And I love John Cena. And I love the era that they went with. This is just perfect. Chain Gang Cena. No cloth goods whatsoever. I do appreciate the hat. I appreciate the armbands, but we already got an Ultimate Edition with these armbands, or at least one half of these armbands. It's the same damn leg mold. It's the same damn shoe mold. I don't think the head sculpt really represents Cena from this era. This is not a 2005 John Cena head sculpt. This is a 2011 looking head sculpt, man. Look at that face. And I just think that it was very bare bones. I know it had the WWE Championship. It had the chain gang chain, the hat, whatever. No cloth goods or shirt with it. Kind of just bum me out. I, I mean, Elite 100 had to have some representatives because that set really, really bothered me this year, which we also have this rock figure. This rock figure is just a mixture of different eras. They threw the jersey on there with this gear. The Brahma Bull Championship was fantastic, but I'm looking at the figure by itself. This head sculpt, why is he smiling? He's got a goofy smile, doesn't match the era. It's just, uh, again, man, I'm kind of just listing off the things that either A, disappointed me this year, or just the problems from this year that I find that, that were higher priority on the list. Things that cannot be overlooked or overstated to me. Next up, we have Elite 104 Solo Sokoa. This one really speaks for itself. We do have Elite 107 Solo Sokoa coming soon. Can't wait for that figure. Should be next week, maybe the end of the week, we'll have that review up, like next, maybe like next Thursday or Friday. But they made this guy way too skinny. His legs are way too skinny. Coming out of these gigantic shorts into these thin pole legs, he's got the damn Daniel Bryan torso, or the Usos torso. Way too small for Solo Sokoa, man. Just not good. Could have been way better. And they didn't even give him a Samoan spike hand. I like the shirt. I like the head sculpt. I like that we have a Solo Sokoa, but Jesus, the Elite 107 is going to blow that one out of the water. That one was one of the shockers of the year. Next up is Elite 102 Rhea Ripley. Now, this is a fix-up right here that I've kind of customized, so it does 
doesn't necessarily count, but Elite 102 Rhea Ripley, way too small for Rhea Ripley. This looks much better, and I know she had a giraffe neck. I've kind of altered it, but this represents her much better. The Elite 110 Rhea that's coming soon is also going to represent her much more, but the Elite 102 Rhea really disappointed me. Also, not a good gear. Covered up her tats. Just a, I don't know, just a big head scratcher. Next up, we have a couple Mick Foley figures, man. We have the Defining Moments Mankind. Now, I know a lot of people like this figure. I love this head sculpt. You know, I like that it has the, the tacks in the back and whatnot, but they made this man way too damn big. Look how big the torso is. They gave him these massive arms. The shirt's ripped up right there, which is sculpted on there. I don't really hate that they sculpted on that onto the arm, and it's like this really unique thing going on with these arms. The arms are just way too damn jacked, man. His arms aren't like John Cena, like, puffing out his damn sleeves. He's not the damn rock, you know what I'm saying? I just, ugh, man. And, like, look at this. Why, why, how, I mean, you're, they're gonna say, oh, he's older now, so his arms aren't as puffy. This would have sufficed way better. The, these arms over here would have been better. I think they need to make, like, just less defined, more, like, chubbier arms, I think. But, I don't know. I like aspects of the Mankind, but I just, I just hated how jacksy he looks. I said it all year. He looks very jacksy, very big torso, very big arms. He just doesn't look proportional. Had to put the Mankind on there for some of the worst. And then this figure right here, Commissioner Foley, great head sculpt on the guy. Jesus Christ. Great head sculpt on the guy. Love the flannel, but the painted on shirt right here just looks horrific. Like, just look at him, man. It looks like he's wearing a damn bodysuit. I don't, I just, <laughs> looks like he's about to go freaking get on a space rocket and go with NASA. Painted on shirt, I think either they should have went with two cloth shirts over a skin torso and that maybe they couldn't afford that or whatever. I just don't like the painted on shirt. Like, filling out the sleeve here, like, that's supposed to be a short sleeve shirt. It just doesn't work for me. Again, I like the head sculpt in flannel. Also, these John Cena shoes with these sweat pant legs. Been wanting to get rid of those forever. But yeah, I don't like the painted on shirt on that guy. It just looks awful. Next up, may have a hot take here, but I'm going Ultimate Edition Jake the Snake. And again, just like the Ruthless Aggression era, okay, I know it's paying homage. I know it's paying homage to the OG figure, but it's a gear we've already seen before. So it's like, why not pick a different character? Why pick Jake the Snake this early on? I don't know. Just a, just something out there. I don't hate the formula or anything. I'm not a big fan of the head sculpts. A lot of people tell me they look just like Jake the Snake. I think they favor somewhat, but I wasn't really blown away by them. And and the gear is the main thing. That that it's it's just not the most exciting overall. I do like the Damien, and there are some good aspects of the Jake the Snake. But again, I'm trying to cover the full year of things that I was either a slightly disappointed by, or just some things I wanted to mention in the video. Next up, we have a just way worse, a way worse figure, man. We have the Walmart exclusive Legends Eddie Guerrero Ultimate Edition. I have to take this guy's arms off so we can see the abomination that this guy is. Skin tone's incorrect. Shirt's fantastic. Gear's fantastic. Eddie Guerrero's fantastic. Head sculpts are solid. This torso for Eddie Guerrero, man. This torso should have its own video on just why this shish doesn't work. But I think they are going to correct this guy next year. Really excited for the Walmart exclusive Monday Night Wars line, Eddie Guerrero. But just look at that abomination from here. What is he? Tiniest legs of all time. The biggest effing chest you've ever seen in your life. Look at those shoulders, man. I have to keep this, this camera aspect so you can understand how insane this figure looks. Just really ridiculous arms, shoulders, torso. You put the shirt on there, it's not nearly as bad. We do have the updated version again. Not the updated version of this guy, but he is getting a skin tone update. He's getting all kinds of stuff updated about Eddie Guerrero, but you couldn't talk about the worst of the year without bringing up the Ultimate Edition Eddie Guerrero, and I love Eddie Guerrero, and I appreciate this figure in some ways, but good lord. Next up, we're going to talk about the new Mr. Perfect Build-A-Figure. I think it was the SummerSlam wave, if I'm not mistaken. I really, I just feel like the legs on this guy were so stiff, man. This new Build-A-Figure leg mold, the pinless. Oh my god, that is just egregious to me. I like Mr. Perfect in the turtleneck. It's not really the figure as much as it is this new leg mold that we're talking about. Again, I'm kind of just picking pieces of things that were the worst of the year. Not only is the figures, but I don't like the new Build-A-Figure legs right here. The suited Build-A-Figure legs, again man, just, oh my god, that is so tight. Let me know if you guys feel the same way. I just, those things bother the hell out of me. So we do have the Mr. Perfect Build-A-Figure legs mainly, but I don't know, not, the figure's not bad. It's just, I feel like they could have maybe gone a different direction. Next up was a figure that really, really disappointed me, man. The 60th anniversary, then now forever together, elite Target exclusive Stone Cold Steve Austin from the four pack. When I saw this figure for the first time, I was so excited about it, but mine has the just most loose legs of all time. And the head sculpt's making a really weird expression. I love a, like I've been waiting on a definitive Stone Cold. God, dude, these loose legs with these short boots makes me want to throw something out in the yard. Are these pinless? 
boneless legs? I bet that's why, man. So newly sculpted legs. I like the dry brushing on the shorts. I love the shirt. I love that it's an Austin in this look. I've been begging for an, an updated Austin of that Hall of Fame Elite in jorts. But they put it in a damn four pack, so it's really hard to obtain. So you can't get multiple copies. And then when you get the figure, it just feels like it's going to fall apart on you. I just, God, dude, this disappointed the shish out of me this year. Oh, man. Just a heavy. I like the figure, but very disappointed in the execution. Next up, we have the Elite 102 Austin Theory. Really, from the neck down, this guy's really good. Fantastic figure from the neck down. And it's why we put him on extra figure surgery. Go check out the fix up over there. But this head sculpt is just god awful. The two different head sculpts, I like what they were going for. I understand what they were going for, but I just think the execution wasn't there. This just looks like he's about to, I, I don't know. He just looks like he's sipping tea with his pinky up at a play in 1687. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. It just, uh, oh man. Austin Theory head sculpt. Get it out. Next up, we may have a hot take, man. I'm putting a couple Hulk Hogan's on here, man. We're going with the skinny, non accurate, tan Hulk Hogan figures right here, man. And if these had the right torsos with the right skin tones and everything, these would be in the best figures of the year. But missing those details right there, man, really, really bother me. I, I like all the, like, I love the cloth goods. I like everything going on. Not to mention their weight belts are inaccurate and whatnot. But if these had the correct skin tones and the correct formulas, these would be really, really good figures. And I want that to be stated. These are good figures outside of their skin tones and whatnot. And I really wasn't a big fan of this new head sculpt from the Legends way. But I wanted to talk about these because the inconsistencies in the Hulk Hogan era with the different figures, I really just wish they would have figured out the formula and the skin tone before we got all those figures because now I feel like all these figures are really missing out on the new torso and skin tone and everything like that so I don't know that's just something I wanted to talk about there but next up we have an ultimate edition and one that was actually in our honorable mentions for the top figures of the year because it had some cool things about it but I'm talking about the gobbledygooker okay the gobbledygooker not necessarily one of the worst figures of the year but mine specifically like the arm pops off with not even any effort whatsoever you can't really pose him around that well. The legs are super stiff because they are the... Holy shish, is this the new Finn Balor leg mold? It could be. Maybe not. I don't like that there's no articulation down here whatsoever. This is just basic feet, practically. Yeah, there goes the arm again. And it's a very unique thing, again. And I, I you know, it's just, it's an obscure character, which I can appreciate, but figure cannot pose around whatsoever. And that's a big part of the thing, especially when you're paying 70 bucks for that big box set with The Undertaker. It would have been nice to have, you know, a better articulated figure, but, you know, I still put it in the honor mentions of the best Ultimate Editions of the year because it is such a unique thing. It's very cool and all those different things, but I feel like the execution of the figure could have been better. But again, I just wanted to include him here with the things that disappointed me about the figure in general, but I still appreciate the sculpts and whatnot. Next up, we have a figure that heavily disappointed me. It would probably be the number one. It would probably, It's definitely in the top three most biggest disappointments of the year, man. That is going to be the Ultimate Edition Kurt Angle figure, a figure that I was looking forward to. I've been wanting a Kurt Angle Ultimate Edition, especially from this specific era and with the singlet on it's not that bad you know it's really not that bad but there are certain things that could really throw this figure over the top but mainly it's this jack torso it's got the eddie guerrero problem just way too big and in certain aspects it works but i think that the macho man torso would have worked much better in ultimate edition form for this kurt angle hell the the randy orton ultimate edition torso probably would have worked better i would have even taken the rick rude or seth rollins style i just think it's way too big and even his elites are too big but this figure really really disappointed me. The head sculpts I really wasn't a big fan of either, so there's just, oh man, that one really disappointed me, but I love Kurt Angle and I love his figure, so that one was kind of a shocker. Next up, we have the WrestleMania Elite Trish Stratus. Just a head scratcher. They could have done so much better here. It's a re-release of the Hall of Fame Elite. It's literally no difference. Basic kick pads, just nothing, just a lifeless release, I feel like. So, yeah, th that's the reason this is on here. And also, the, okay, it's okay, it's not stuck, thank God. But yeah, that, that one was a very big disappointment, in my opinion. And then last but not least, this one's going to shock some people, Brad, but this had to be on the list, man. The damn John Cena Ultimate Edition feet and jogger combo from the Usos Elite 106 figures and their Ultimate Editions. This has to be talked about, Brad. This has to be talked about. The legs are so damn stiff, pinless. Not to mention on the Ultimate Editions, they have drop down hips, so that kind of even makes it worse, to be honest with you. So you have the fit, you have these tight, pinless joints. You have these Ultimate Edition feet from the John Cena mold, and they just need to go, man. Everything else about the figures I love. I love the Usos. I love all the cloth goods. I like the head sculpts. I like all the different stuff, but when you... It's specifically these figures from, like, the waist down. I'm not even talking about anything else. Maybe the, the, the Daniel Bryan torsos on the Elite 106, that definitely needs to be discussed. That should never happen again. They should have Usos 
Usos torsos on their elites. But these figures from the waist down, I just, some of the just, just off, just awful to me. There he goes. Just so stiff. Just the stiffest thing you've ever seen. And then you pair that with these Ultimate Edition feet, man. It's not a good combo. It's not fun. It's not a fun combo. The figures feel like they're going to snap in half. And that had to be discussed. So again, I'm not even talking about all the accessories. I'm not talking about all the good things about the figure. I am talking about simply the John Cena Ultimate Edition feet with these Uso Jugger pinless legs is a horrific combo and it makes me sick. It doesn't really make me sick, but it makes me want to set my hair on fire. But yeah, man, I think that pretty much wraps up my worst wrestling or WWE action figures of the year, man. I know that some of this stuff is subjective, or a lot of it is subjective, but that's why, you know, it's I'm not necessarily saying this is the right list, but it is my list. This is my list of the cons of the year for wrestling or WWE action figures. Like, the, everything here are the issues that I saw this year, and I wanted to bring them to attention. You know, whether it's a full figure, whether it's just pieces of a figure, they kind of brought them all down. Like, there are definitely, there are redeemable or good qualities about every single one of these figures right here, but there, I definitely just wanted today, since we did the top 10 Ultimates, the top 25 Elites, and praised all the great things this year, you know, I wanted to do a video on the opposite end of that and just kind of discuss it, man. So that is my video for the worst WWE action figures of 2023. But anyways, man, that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know where you agree and disagree down in the comment section below. What was your least favorite figure of the year? What are some things that bothered you this year about Mattel figures and WWE action figures? I would like to know, man. But that is pretty much going to wrap up the video. Huge shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. I appreciate every single, single one of you guys. Thank you guys so very much. For your support this year. Love each and every single one of you. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.